So as we embark on this season, there's a lot of great players. Okay, and 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 they just had a top 100 list on the NFL Network, voted on by players. And we can we can argue about who the best player is, but without question, the most disrespected player in the National Football League is Russell Wilson. In that top 100 players list, he was ranked 61st. Now think about that. You think there's 60 better players than Russell Wilson? He's never received an MVP vote. Cordell Stewart and Chad Pennington have had several. He's never gotten one. Oh, but this tops it off. I see this this morning. Where an NFL exec asked a question to Mike Sando of The Athletic. Excellent reporter. The exec said, you know, it's interesting. I wonder if Russell Wilson's success was only due to the Seahawks defense. Oh, good hell. Um, all right. So now it's time for another. And this, by the way, this is what Russell Wilson deals with all the time. Remember, he was a star at NC State. His coach bailed on him for Mike Glennon. He went to Wisconsin and had the greatest single quarterback year in the history of Badger football. So let's reverse that question. Not how good would Russell be without Pete Carroll in the defense. Let, let's reverse it. What is Pete Carroll's career in the NFL without Russell Wilson? Oh, I'll tell you. Fired, fired, and 14-18. and 18 with Matt Flynn at quarterback. That's Pete's NFL career. Fired with the Patriots, fired with the Jets in 14 and 18. Then they catch a break, get Russell Wilson in the third, and they go from 7 and 9 to 11 and 5. Many of those defensive stars, they'd already been drafted. They were already there, the Earl Thomases, the Richard Shermans. They were already there. 7 and 9 to 11 and 5. By the way, the executive who says if his success is only due to the defense, you do realize Seattle's defense last year was 28th in the league and 32nd against the pass, dead last. If you've watched Seattle over the last five or six years, their drafts have been atrocious, their defense has been outdated, and Russell Wilson was the life preserver to the franchise. And this is what's interesting. Books have chapters, right? You read a book, it's got chapters. All of our lives have chapters, but we aren't books. And so when you get these pro athletes, sometimes we just put our arms around the entire career and go, that's the career. Tom Brady's book had a couple of different chapters. I would argue three. There's the first chapter of Tom Brady's NFL book, which is Belichick and the defense carried this promising young quarterback. That was about four years. And then there was the final 16 in New England, and we've seen proof of it in the last couple of years, is Tom's team. Tom was more important than Belichick. That was the second chapter. Now it's Tom's team. The defense wasn't always great. Good, not great. The third chapter is Tom goes to Tampa and proves it's not only a quarterback league, but even with Belichick, it's a 70-30 split. But nobody gives Russell Wilson that chapter they just put their arms around the whole career russell wilson's career is now moving into its third chapter the first was the first two to three years small young quarterback played differently defense emerged as young and great and marshawn lynch and it was a defense in a run game led team that was the first chapter the last seven years of his 10 years in seattle are a different chapter Defense got old, coach got old and arrogant and stubborn. The defense got horrible, and the drafts were anemic for five straight years. This is a bad roster. It's a bad roster. They're going to win five games. Now the third chapter, Denver. So let's go to the over-unders this morning, what people in Vegas who only care about winning think. Seattle is seen as a five-win team without Russell. Denver now mediocre for years, is now seen as a 10-11 to an 11 win team with Russell. That's their big change. And, and, and this executive is asking, oh, well, what is Russell's career without that defense? Turn the telescope. What's Pete's career without Russell? We can argue who the best player in the league is. The most disrespected player is Russell Wilson. 61st best player in the league. No MVP votes. Pennington, Cordell Stewart got him. 
Several? Can't wait. North Carolina State moved off him for Mike Glennon, and then he went to stodgy conservative Wisconsin football and had 33 touchdowns and I think seven picks. 33 passing touchdowns or total touchdowns, I forget which, for Wisconsin quarterbacks? I've been watching Wisconsin football for three years. That feels like four seasons. He did it in one. So one of the advantages to me to playing in a really good college or professional conference is that you get hardened. uh, You have to play in close games. For instance, last year, Matt Stafford goes to the Rams. The division is outstanding. Uh, You know, he's got to face uh, Russell Wilson twice a year, the Niners and Garoppolo, Kyler Murray. And so you think, oh, man, he goes to a much stronger conference. Poor Matt Stafford. They win the Super Bowl because the Rams were in so many close games. And the NFL is not college football. You're in a lot of close games. So that's one of the things about Buffalo that's interesting. So I picked Buffalo to win the Super Bowl last year, and I'm picking them to end up in the Super Bowl this year and win it. There is, if you do a deep dive, it's pretty remarkable. They are favored in L.A. against the Super Bowl Rams, a loaded injury-free roster by almost a field goal. It's like, what? It's in Los Angeles. It's not in a snowstorm in Buffalo. So it's pretty remarkable how much respect Buffalo has from admirers. Also, how much respect they have when you consider the weakest part of their team is a really important part, offensive line. It's just okay. When you do a deep dive on Buffalo, and again, I love them, and I'm picking them to win the Super Bowl, Here's the concerning thing. I've I've used this term multiple times over the years. I call it a Mike Tyson quality. Mike Tyson wasn't very good in competitive fights with Evander Holyfield or Lennox Lewis because he hadn't been in many competitive fights. He had such dynamic knockout power. A lot of his career was over middle of the third round or sooner. So when you needed nuance and details and great corner support, Tyson didn't have it. He eroded both times against Evander Holyfield, who didn't have the knockout punch and had been more strategic in his career and had to be. And so the Bills are so audaciously talented at wide receiver, pass rush, Josh Allen, that they they Tyson you. They demoralize weak. They overwhelm average. And they're not in a ton of close games. They have the best knockout punch in the league along with the Chiefs. But do you realize in one-score games, the Bills didn't win any of theirs last year? They were 0-6. And that included losses to the average Steelers and the Jags. The Bills were, they didn't win a single one-score game. And the Rams were 7-1 in one-score games. Why? Because they were in them all year. They were in them in their division. They were in them in the playoffs. And so I don't think Buffalo is great sometimes at getting the short running yards you need in close games. Again, when Tyson needed to jab, he didn't have it. He didn't develop it. He never needed it until Evander Holyfield or Lennox Lewis. And so it's interesting. Buffalo's getting unbelievable support because of their knockout ability. The problem is the Rams have that too and are way better in close games. And my guess is Thursday is a really close game. It's why I would take the points and the Rams uh, in that game. But but it'll be fun to watch them because last year the Bills went 0-6 in close games, and they were all weird. There was the punt getting blocked against Pittsburgh. There was 9-6 to loss to the Jags. There was giving up a field goal as Kansas City drove the length of the field in like 13 seconds. There was the Derrick Henry game where they couldn't stop him. Some teams did. Buffalo couldn't. So they just lost a bunch of different ways, could not win a single close game all last year. The Rams, meanwhile, were 7-1. and one. So they'll battle Thursday in the opener. I do believe they are the best teams in their respective conferences. I don't think many doubt that with the Rams, but there's a few people in Kansas City that would disagree on the Bills. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.